Catch and release fishing is a way for anglers to enjoy the resource while also contributing to the greater community's long-standing commitment to the conservation of fish populations. Catch and release fishing is incredibly important to the local economies of many parts of Florida and today one of the most popular groups of species for catch and release is actually sharks and this is probably because these animals put up a great fight they're often very large and exciting and it's a very thrilling experience to catch and see a huge predator in the wild. We've seen a drastic change in how people are interacting with these species in recreational fisheries. 20-30 years ago the mentality was a catch and kill uh, practice where people would bring these huge animals back to the dock for everybody to show off. Whereas today we're seeing a lot of tournaments and a lot of charter boats actually switching to more of a catch and release mentality. This is a great thing because this actually will relieve some of the pressure on some of these threatened populations. In catch and release, the angler acts as their own manager. It is up to them to act in a way that minimizes impacts on the animals. To better understand these impacts, researchers have been teaming up with recreational anglers. Recent work from the University of Miami has shown that many species of sharks captured in recreational fisheries here in Florida respond in different ways to the process of capture and release. By studying their blood and tracking the sharks, the research showed that hammerheads and blacktips were extremely sensitive to catch and release, even at low fight times, while other species like lemons and tigers were extremely robust and great candidates for catch and release. There are a number of basic recommendations and best practices that anglers can follow to maximize the survival of sharks when they're released. Circle hooks are a great choice for catch and release because they almost always hook the sharks in the corner of the mouth. Additionally, it's important not to fight the animals to exhaustion and to minimize fight times. Limiting air exposure is also critical as drying out the gills of the sharks can reduce survival. Also, when restraining the shark boat side, use a tail rope and not a gaff. If you do hook a sensitive species, like a hammerhead, you must be swift and ready to act quickly. And lastly, take notes, be safe, and refine your practices. By following these basic recommendations, shark populations may have a chance to recover and the sharks themselves will live to fight another day.